I won a glow-powered RC plane in a wrap hole this summer. Before that, all I ever flew was electric RC aircraft. I thought it might be interesting to talk about the transition. So if you only fly electric, you can understand what's different with glow-powered engines and figure out if it's something you'd like to try. First of all, these small combustion engines are called glow engines because ignition is accomplished by a combination of heating from compression, heating from a glow plug, and the catalytic effect of the platinum within the glow plug on the methanol within the fuel. They are sometimes also called nitro powered because they contain nitromethane. They typically range in sizes from 0.1 to 1.6 cubic inches, which is an engine displacement. Lots of times you drop the decimal point, and if you mention a 40 sized engine, you're really talking about 0.40 cubic inches. If you need engines with larger displacements, you get into gasoline engines. Gas engines have a spark plug like the ones in your lawnmower or a car. So the plane I won was an Alpha 40 RTF, or ready to fly. It's made by Hangar 9. It's considered a high wing trainer, which is perfect for a beginner. I'll throw some of the specifications on the screen. It's supposed to be ready to fly, but what else do you need to get this thing airborne? Five things. Number one, glow fuel. Fuel with 10% nitromethane is recommended for this particular engine. Number two, a fuel pump. You need a way to pump the fuel into the fuel tank. Number three, a glow driver. You have to heat the glow plug to give your engine ignition. Number four, an electric starter to turn the engine to get it running. You can start them by hand, but an electric starter is easier and safer for a beginner. Number five, they make these field boxes that have everything you need, and you carry them to the flight field with you. I bought a Hobbyco Ultra Tote because it includes a 12 volt lead acid battery for DC power, a 12 volt electric fuel pump, a 1.2 volt glow driver, a 12 volt electric starter, and a place to hold a jug of fuel. It also has a deluxe power panel that lets you connect all these things to the 12 volt battery via banana plugs. You don't need to get a fuel box like this. There are alternatives. They make manual hand cranked fuel pumps that work very well, pumping fuel pretty quickly. Some pilots attach these directly to a red gasoline tank and store their glow fuel in there. They have portable glow drivers that have a rechargeable battery in them and without cords. Instead of turning the engine with an electric starter, you can turn them by hand or use a safer option and turn it with a chicken stick. This is more dangerous and more work, so I would suggest using an electric starter for a beginner. Now that we got everything that we need, let's go to the flying field and fly this thing. Let's walk through the engine startup procedure. I have to admit, I was really intimidated by the engine start procedure initially, but after doing it several times, it got easier and it becomes faster to do. First you need to add glow fuel in the tank. There are two hoses coming from the fuel tank. One is called the fuel line and it goes to the carburetor and the other is called the vent line and it goes to the muffler. Disconnect the vent line from the muffler so it can act as a vent. Connect the fuel line to your fuel pump hose. Since my pump is electric, I just move the switch to start pumping the fuel into the tank. The switch has three positions. The middle position is off and the other two positions either suck the fuel from the fuel tank or suck the fuel from the fuel jug. If the fuel starts traveling in the wrong direction, Direction, you just need to reverse the switch direction. If you have a manual pump, you just turn the crank by hand. Again, if the fuel travels in the wrong direction, just crank it the other way. So you fill up the fuel tank. It usually fills up in less than 30 seconds, but it really depends on the fuel tank size. You know it's done when the fuel starts coming out of the vent tube. Shut off the switch immediately and reattach the vent and fuel lines. Make sure you connect them to the correct places. Place the plane somewhere where it won't move. My club has these nice stands that are perfect. You can also have someone help by holding the wings or standing in front of the tail while the plane is on the ground. When the engine is cold, it's a good idea to prime the engine. Note, this part may vary for different engines. Turn on your transmitter, turn on your receiver, and increase the throttle to max. This will open up the carburetor all the way. Put your finger over the carburetor hole and rotate the prop six complete revolutions. This brings fuel from the fuel tank into the carburetor. Close the throttle but leave a small opening. 
maybe one or two millimeter gap in the carburetor opening. Attach a glow driver to the glow plug. This one is pushed on. If yours has it, you could set the voltage. We'll start with a middle setting and increase it later if it doesn't start. Put the electric starter firmly on the spinner and squeeze the switch. You need to make sure the starter is turning in the correct direction as designated by your engine. The engine should start within seconds of applying the starter and then you can remove the starter. Let the engine idle for around 30 seconds. Adjust your throttle trim if necessary to achieve constant low throttle. With the glow driver still attached, Attached, smoothly move the throttle to the maximum and the engine should go to max RPMs. Reduce the throttle to the minimum. Remove the glow driver. Position the plane for a taxi and take off. One step that I didn't talk about is engine idle adjustment. These engines can be adjusted if needed, but this one comes preset so that it doesn't need any adjustments. Here are some other things that I found are different than electric aircraft. Receiver pack and servo power. Electric planes have an ESC that typically has a BEC or battery eliminator circuit that powers your servos. Glow planes usually have a NICAD or nickel metal hydride battery pack to directly power your receiver. You can also use a BEC with a LiPo battery if you wish. Dead stick landings. Dead stick landings are what happens when your engine quits running or it runs out of fuel. Your prop becomes a dead stick and you're forced to try to land the plane as soon as possible without any engine power. While this can happen with electrics, it seems more common with combustion engines. Throttle servo. You have an additional servo that is used to control the throttle. The servo horn is connected to a long push rod that is connected to the throttle on the engine. Moving the servo opens and closes the carburetor. When the engine first starts, the carburetor is mostly closed, which lets less air in and causes the engine to run slowly. If you open the throttle, the carburetor opens, lets more air in, and causes the engine to run faster. Throttle cut. You want a way to quickly close the carburetor fully to stop the engine in case of an emergency or just to stop the engine after you land the plane. This is done with a throttle cut, which simply means you lower the throttle low enough that it causes the carburetor to close fully. Usually you can program your radio to do this for you, or you can just lower the throttle trim all the way down. Cleaning the plane. The muffler spits out all kinds of oil and exhaust. You want to clean it off your plane. Cleaning it with Windex, washer fluid, or isopropyl alcohol will work. Use it with a paper towel or even better, microfiber cloth. Engine mounts. Engines typically have these mounts that stick off the firewall. Some are adjustable so that you can spread them out for wider engines. They come in different sizes. Your engine usually has some screws or bolts that attach the engine to the mount. The engine mount is usually bolted to the plywood firewall with blind nuts on the opposite side. Noise. Hey, these things can make some noise, but that's what I like about them. Electrics are generally much quieter. The muffler chosen can make a big difference in the sound too. Two and four cycle glow engines sound differently, as do gas engines. Wait. These engines tend to be heavier than their equivalent electric motors, but it can be argued that the additional mass can cause the plane to do better in the wind. If you start out with an engine, I would still recommend flying a simulator and or with an instructor. These high wing trainers seem to be very popular and relatively easy to fly. Some of the foam electrics are lighter and easier to repair in the event of a crash. That's it for me. So tell me what you think. Do you fly both electric and glow planes? What are some of the differences that you can share? Do you have any advice to offer for an electric pilot wanting to try a glow plane? Also, how do glow and gasoline powered engines compare? Post your suggestions below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to get reminders for future videos.